When it comes to fighting games, there are a few developers who have left a huge mark on the genre. Capcom, Midway, and Namco come to mind, but few are as intimately tied to fighting games as Arc System Works. Arc's journey from small-time console game developer to fighting game legend hasn't been easy. The developer has dealt with huge technological changes across multiple console generations, and its hard work has only truly paid off in the past decade. But in following that path, Arc has made some of the most hardcore fighting games ever, and equally hardcore music to go alongside it. That is bullshit blazing, still my heart is blazing. So today on Game Files, let's take a look at the history of Arc System Works. The company was founded in 1988 by former Sega employee Minoru Kaduka, who saw the rise of console games and wanted to get in on the action. Arc's first games in its early years were work for hire projects, mostly involving porting arcade games to consoles. Double Dragon for the Sega Master System, Rolling Thunder, and Final Lap for the NES. The list goes on. It wasn't until Sony decided to enter the console market in 1994 that Arc began to think about making its own games. Just before it made the switch to the PlayStation, however, Arc released a game that would prove to be a harbinger of the studio's future. And it was based on one of the most popular anime series of all time. Sailor Moon S was Arc's first fighting game, which is fitting considering that the studio is now synonymous with anime fighting games. Don't go thinking it's a bad game either. Sailor Moon S is still played at EVO to this very day. In developing its own games, it took time for Arc to build its own identity. Its first titles included a 3D mech game, a dungeon crawler, and a bunch of dating sims. Fortunately, a man would come along who would forever change Arc System Works by mixing three things together. Fighting games, anime, and rock and roll. That man was Daisuke Ishiwatari, an illustrator, musician, occasional voice actor, and game designer. Having worked at Arc for several years, Ishiwatari liked realistic fighting games such as Fatal Fury and Street Fighter, but wanted to create a new fighter that had more panache and style. The fact that those two games are not realistic in the slightest speaks to how over the top his idea was. Ishiwatari's pitch was accepted, and in 1998, what would become Arc's signature franchise was released. Guilty Gear was a 2D fighter in an era where 3D fighters were becoming the norm. Its rock-infused soundtrack and world, along with its gorgeous sprites, were praised at the time, but it didn't attract a lot of attention. It wasn't until a sequel called Guilty Gear X was released in 2000 that Arc's name was truly put on the map, establishing it as one of the best fighting game developers. Guilty Gear received a number of spin-offs, sequels, and updates as a result. Its reputation was that it was a very good-looking series with complex mechanics that made it hard to get into. In addition to Guilty Gear, Arc kept working on fighting games such as Sengoku Basara Cross, Fist of the North Star, and the strangely prophetic Dragon Ball Z Supersonic Warriors. As the 2000s rolled along and a new console generation loomed, Arc decided it needed a new IP. The studio wanted to take advantage of HD graphics as well as combat Guilty Gear's shrinking player base. And just like how Ishiwatari changed Arc with Guilty Gear, a new figure would chart a new course with his own franchise. This time, it was Toshimichi Mori, a friend slash rival of Ishiwatari who wanted to simplify Guilty Gear's controls while retaining its ridiculous flair. Seriously, if you're expecting Arc to ever make a normal fighting game, that ship has long since sailed. Case in point, Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger launched in 2009 in arcades before making its way to the PS3 and Xbox 360. While it did have a simpler control scheme, it built on Guilty Gear's beautiful 2D animation and over-the-top characters. And just like Ark's other franchise, Blaze Blue got more complicated with each new update and sequel. As Blaze Blue expanded outside of fighting games into anime and manga, so too did Ark grow into a video game publisher. Arc began publishing in the late 2000s, but began to ramp up its efforts in the 2010s by publishing such eclectic games as Arcana Hearts, The Missing, and the popular Undernight series. All the while, Arc continued to develop games that further the company's reputation as one of the best fighting game developers. Its collaboration with Atlas for Persona 4 Arena earned Arc massive acclaim. 
The newest Guilty Gear sequels combine 2D and 3D animation to make what is one of the best looking fighting games of all time. And ARK entered into the crossover fighting space with Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, which included characters from Persona, Undernight, and Ruby. But ARK's biggest success came on the 30th anniversary of its founding, with the release of Dragon Ball Fighters. With over 3.5 million copies sold in less than a year, ARK's spectacular fighting game adaptation of the popular anime is one of the best fighting games released in recent memory. Rather than rest on its laurels, however, ARK is eager to take advantage of its newfound momentum. ARK's next game, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, is already proving to be a huge hit in Japan before its release worldwide. And the next Guilty Gear game, Strive, looks absolutely stunning from what we've seen so far. Arc System Works made its name on the back of impressive technical achievements combined with compelling and complex gameplay. Thanks to its trademark style and flair, wherever Arc decides to go next, fans worldwide are sure to follow.